Hi, I'm Paul Martin from Colten. Thanks for watching our Players' Lounge interview with Lloyd Glasspool about his inspiring college tennis experience, including his NCAA win. Lloyd is a great example of a player who made the most of his college opportunity. I hope you enjoy hearing what he has to say. While Lloyd was a good junior player, he really excelled in college, winning the NCAA national doubles title in his final year. After leaving college, he quickly moved up into the, into the ATP's top 300 singles and top 200 doubles rankings. Lloyd tells an exciting story and he gives great advice. So talk us through um, how you ended up making the decision to actually go to college. Uh, you know, what was happening at the time and uh, yeah, how did you decide? One of my main coaches was Daniel Kiernan, who obviously went to LSU. And he was a pretty uh, big influence like from an early age. He always wanted me to keep that option open. So whatever I took in high school was... Uh, Spanish and geography because you needed those kind of subjects to help towards I don't know whatever it is you needed in America so I was always pretty keen on keeping that path open and then it became a reality really when I was in my first year of sixth form and I actually went to school a year early I didn't finish my second year of sixth form uh, and I only decided to go at the start of my second year and gave myself, I think it was four months to get there. So I went to visit LSU through Dan Kiernan and someone actually had an argument with the coach at Texas and got kicked off the team that fall. And there just happened to be a space open. And then Paul Hutchins knew uh, the Texas team very well, knew the university, loved it, wanted me to check it out and it all kind of just fell into place honestly I got very very lucky I kind of left it very last minute and yeah so Lloyd at what point in college did you make the big jump that then helped you transition into the pros well I remember my first year at least I definitely felt way off the pace like I came in with an ATP ranking I kind of thought I was going to be one of the big dogs in college and I was bottom of the lineup in my own team, not even like, across the country, you know. And that was kind of a good wake-up call to see the level of college. And uh, I just kind of worked my ass up for the first two years. And then in the third year, or maybe the end of the second year, I moved up to number two and started to have like some good wins. And I don't know why, but my serve just developed in the third year. And then that's kind of when... I think I just must have settled down with all the schooling and everything just became a lot easier and I learned how to manage it all and then I really developed quicker from that and obviously my game took off as well. So I'd say it was probably the third year when I really started to believe I could make some pushes in the pro game. So probably your biggest achievement in college was to win the NCAA doubles championships in 2015. Um, what did that do to help build your confidence as you moved into the pros? Yeah, I mean, I went into college knowing I wanted to go pro after, which I think a lot of people do. Mm. And then I definitely had doubts after my second year because I just thought I was a bit off the pace. And then third, fourth year were better and that got me back on track. But then obviously the pinnacle of winning the NCAAs was a big boost. It was almost like, here's the confidence from college, now go and take that yeah. and play in the pros. So, I mean, if you say it back in England now, it probably carries more weight. But when I, when I won it, no one really knew too much about it back home. But in America, I was doing, especially at the university, like interviews and TV stuff and, in the papers they just make you feel so good about it and like it's such a big achievement 
which it is, and you should feel good about it. So then you right. can obviously take that and kick on with it in the pros, yeah. which is confidence isn't easy to come by. So no, absolutely. So college is a lot about team tennis. Uh, what was your uh, your personal experience playing team tennis? How did you find it? I think that's probably one of the biggest areas where I struggled, especially my first two years, because I was so set on going professional. I was just like, I'm going to win my match, win my doubles match, and like just take care of what I can take care of. And I didn't really buy into the team environment and kind of, getting your teammates through is just as important as you winning. And I think that was just kind of like a bigger picture thing, help you develop as a person and kind of took the pressure off you as well. Like if you're playing for someone rather than all for yourself and, and it makes it a lot more fun as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I found that myself. It was a, it was a real fun part. So as we've said before, the team tennis is a big thing at college. Um, how did you guys perform as a team while you were at Texas? And, and what are your best memories of, of playing team tennis? Um, in the conference stuff, I know we won one conference once. We never won the tournament, but we did win uh, well, Yeah, just the conference once. And we had a great win at home against uh, number one ranked OU. Uh, that was a pretty special moment. The crowd were big. Uh, actually, I think Ed Curry, Dan Smothers, all of these boys were in town for this match, all watching it. So it was probably one of the best crowds that I've ever had, actually, because everyone was just getting so into it. And yeah, I mean, everyone was just playing for each other, supporting each other so much. And that was probably one of my best memories as well in yeah. tennis. So thinking about the different uh, experiences you've had in tennis with juniors, college and, and professional. You know, how does college tennis compare to the others? Before, I didn't actually travel too much. I did it like under 14s and 16s. But again, that's so young. But compared to the pros, it's like luxury. You know, everything's sorted for you. You literally just turn up with your bag at a certain time and certain place and the whole trip's taken care of. You get put in your room, a nice hotel most of the time. Your travels all sorted, your food's all sorted, you're never worrying about expenses or money. So it's a little different. You kind of there's never any uh financial pressure, put it that way. Yeah. When you're travelling. And as I said, it's all sorted for you, so you haven't gotta sort any of that yourself. Uh so it's a little bit of a wake-up call when you start in the pros and you're hustling and you're trying to book the cheapest hotels and the cheapest flights and whatnot. Yeah. It really allows you to enjoy it, I guess, and just really enjoy your four years and the travel. And Sure. So how would you describe the level of tennis in college? And would you say it prepared you for playing in the professional ranks? For the most part. you Obviously, there's some teams where okay, you're probably going to win 7-0 or whatever it is. But even those teams, their number one and two guys were usually pretty good level. And then when you face the big teams, obviously, you know, you're probably facing someone top, at least top 500. There's a good chance the number one guy could be top 300. And so if you're winning those kind of matches, you know, your level's up there. Yeah. But for the most part, yeah, I think the level was futures and higher definitely good enough for the pros good so how would you describe the facilities that you had access to um, for your tennis for your strength training and even for the sort of physio and medical support yeah again I'd, I'd say it's kind of luxury compared to what you're probably going to get in the pros uh the gym that I went to was the one where all the athletes went to train, even the football team and the, the environment in it was just amazing to have all these like world-class athletes all training in one place, kind of cracking on, doing their own thing, watching the shot putters and all these Olympians like just lift ridiculous weights. It was just so much easier for you to motivate yourself and you to train hard and actually enjoy it at the same time. You know, people used to like going into the training room. Uh, and then obviously you get all the physios, all the facilities that are just world class. 
and again you're not going to get that when you start off on the tour unless you're a millionaire and employ your own people but not many people get that so again it's just an amazing experience uh, that not many people would experience in the pros at all even at the very top levels I would say So how about the academic and tennis schedules that you had to combine? Uh, how did you manage that? It takes a little while to get used to it, and it's definitely on you a bit. You've got to kind of want to do it and put those things first. So for the first year, it was kind of crazy. You want to play as much as you can and go out and have fun as much as you can, like see the city, explore the campus, whatever. But you end up finding your feet and it's just all about time management really and kind of making sure you put school and uh, training and tennis first and uh, then all the other stuff. But yeah, there's big support there. Uh, the academic room where you have to go study for every night. They kind of make you go an hour every night for the first year, I think it is. So they kind of hold your hand for a bit and, make it easy on you so it's a big thing to move country um what was it like to live in the u.s uh it was definitely a change at the start uh bit of a big shock because i didn't even visit texas i just committed without visiting yeah um, same here yeah but luckily austin is actually an amazing city somewhere i would live in america if i had to live anywhere uh Food's a little different. That can be a struggle. You've really got to take a little time to find out what's kind of good for you in the good spots. But other than that, I didn't find it too bad because I was living with the team. We went into our two houses next door to each other with six people in each. And it was pretty fun from the get-go and easy to settle in. So uh, what did you find, let's say, particularly special? Um, you know, something that stands out about your U.S. college experience? When you touched on the living with the athletes, and I don't think I answered that really, but for me, that was one of the massive parts that kind of puts it all into perspective, that you're all basically there for school and you're all doing, like, sport is ultimately second, you know, and it doesn't matter kind of how good you are or whatever, everyone's still got that respect for each other and you just go to the dining hall lunch every day and I remember looking back now I was just sat at a table with Jordan Spieth who's now one of the best golfers ever you got like who is it Sanya Richards Ross and uh, Justin Tucker these like Super Bowl winners all these gold medalists I think our swimming team was made up of like four gold medalists and everyone just there's no egos it's just I know it just kind of puts it all in perspective that there's a bigger bigger picture in life. It's not all about the sport, you know? Yeah. And I thought that's a pretty cool thing to learn whilst you're there. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, while we're talking, so I had uh, Ricky Williams was the same four years as me and he was went to the Saints. Um, he was a Heisman Trophy winner my senior year, his senior year. Yeah, like you say, Olympians and so on. It's just amazing. So there are a lot of other college sports going on, um, especially at schools like Texas. So what did you uh, enjoy about those other sports? Um, watching other sports. I mean, the football is amazing. As you know, the whole city gets shut down. You can't drive anywhere. There's like, it's based up the London map and everyone's piling in the streets, walking to the stadium. Uh, just that is such a cool experience. All the student athletes get first three rows of a certain section and you're all in there together, enjoying the game, probably tailgate a little bit before. So, yeah, I mean, it's a hundred and some, 108,000 stadium, 108,000 people stadium. So, yeah, just to be watching that with all your kind of friends and the atmosphere is, yeah, pretty amazing. Yeah, if you're like me, you probably had several Sundays where you, you didn't have much of a voice after yeah, exactly. uh, after the Saturday game. Yeah. 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 Cool. So what's the best memory you've had uh, from college that you'd like to share with everyone? Um, 
I mean, winning the NCAA in Waco, which is Baylor, as my last ever match as a Longhorn, I mean, that's pretty special. Probably. I was, it's an hour and 15 minute drive, so like all my friends and the team also drove, drove to watch the match and I don't know, them all coming on court after and taking photos and just, I don't know, that was just an amazing experience, amazing way to end college. So when you think about what you've learned in college tennis, uh, what's the biggest thing that's helped you as you transitioned into the pros? Um, for me, one of the biggest things I think would probably just be my development as a human rather than anything like technical or anything like just kind of growing up, learning to take care of all aspects of your life. And just, sure. I guess, the separation of when you're on court as well, being able to completely focus about being on court, no matter what you do in life, and you're going to have stresses, whether they're financial or family or anything, and just learning to focus on what you're doing at the present time. So once you get on a match court, that's all you focus about not about the test the next day or end the exams or anything. And I guess it's just kind of, yeah, focusing on what you can control and what's ahead of you. For me, that's a one big thing. And what was your junior ranking, both nationally and internationally? Yeah, maybe 800. Yeah. Um, our ATP, I picked up one point before... I went to college, but other than that, I didn't really have anything to go off. Right. So, I just kind of had Paul Hutchins' word, kind of, he put out a good word. So when you were looking at going to college, um, what was your junior ranking in the UK? I was must have, I would have been 17. There couldn't have been that many guys still playing. I'd say a top 10 or maybe yeah. like top 8. But I had some pretty good guys like Ollie Golden, who was winning slams, George Moore, <laughs> those boys. So, of course, the big question for today, Lloyd, is uh, what do you say to the young players out there now who are considering their options uh, for tennis, you know, professional uh, versus college tennis in particular? What's your advice? Um, honestly, I'd say that the only option really unless you're winning slams is to go to college if you want to make it as a tennis player um i just think it's so hard to make it professionally that unless you've been winning at that top level at a young age and you've got all the contracts and the money and the people behind you that you can employ from that those contracts then college is definitely the way to mature as a person, mature your game, get the body stronger, match tolerance, you know, work on all those things. And then at the age of 20, 21, you can hopefully jump into it and climb the rankings rather than being stuck at, I don't know, a thousand in the world for four years, losing money every week, you know? So we're in lockdown right now with COVID-19. Uh, what's the uh, situation like for you and, and what's coming up next? Um, obviously there's a lot of uncertainty right now. I don't even know when we're going to start back up. Uh, there's talk that the US Open is going to be cancelled. The New York mayor just announced something yesterday. So if there's no slams, there's obviously no challenges or ATPs going on either because there's no point having those without the slams. So when I find out when what the schedule is going to be, I will just get back on court as quick as I can and as soon as I can when the government allows it and then hopefully start travelling. Uh, yeah, obviously need to find some money between now and then, but yeah, just try and get back on the road and the rankings was in a good place before all this, so hopefully I can pick up from where I left off and keep going in the right direction. Hey guys, thanks so much for listening. This is Marcus Willis from Col10. And as Lloyd said there, he got lucky in going to college and look what he did with it after. Here at Col10, we work cards so you don't need to get lucky. We work primarily with players from Europe, 
who want help to find the right college programme for them. In particular, we focus on Italian and British players. Please get in contact with us through our website, Facebook or email at team at Thank you.